Hi, today I want to talk about how to create your own social media plan template. When it comes to social media, we need to ensure that we're not just throwing out content for the sake of it on, plat on every single platform. We want to be strategic with what we're doing with our social media and that's why we need a plan. Hi, my name is Kelly O'Brien. I'm an online marketing and social media coach and I help you move your most aligned clients from discovering who you are online through to investing with you using storytelling, strategy and systems. And today we are really talking about the strategy behind our social media. What uh, are we doing on our social media? What are the goals of our social media? And what content should we be putting out there? And how do we actually come up with a, um, a plan of action to get the most out of it? So I have a lot of clients who are able to achieve some really great results from their social media and it's about being strategic. Some who have opened doors to major speaking opportunities are the ones who have found collaborative opportunities through social media and it's about being strategic as I said. So I want to go through seven steps that you need to take when it comes to putting together your social media plan. Now the first one we need to look at is who is your ideal client but also more importantly where are they hanging out. Now I don't advocate being on every single platform that is out there. You'll simply burn yourself out and you'll also weaken your message. So what you need to do is pick two to three maximum platforms that you want to hang out on that you enjoy doing but also that your ideal client is hanging out on. Now the reason that I say that you enjoy doing is because if you show up on that platform and you don't love doing it, then that energy will come through in your content. So we need to be really clear about what is it that we enjoy doing, but don't hang out on just those platforms. Think about, okay, is my ideal client there as well? So you might, may love doing Instagram, but if your ideal client isn't on Instagram, then just stick to doing that from a personal perspective. Don't waste your time trying to do that um, from a business perspective. So that's the first one is getting really clear on that. And I'll provide a link on how to understand who your ideal client is and where to find out where they're hanging out online. But we can look at a typical day of someone uh, that you already have who's a client that you would love 10 more of in your business. Think about what their typical day looks like. What platforms are they uh, you know, on at particular times of the day? Think about those things as far as where you need to be to meet them where they are. Number two is that you need to think about what your goal is of social media. We're not on social media just for the sake of it. We want to be there to actually have a plan behind it. Now, I was talking to a business owner this week who has a significant uh, social media following but doesn't feel that he's getting the most out of um, those followers and can see that um, one, it's really those goals and having a strategy um, to achieve a particular goal. So make sure that you set, set some goals around what you want your social media to achieve. Now for me, it's about trying to grow my email list because if, for example, Facebook happens to fall over tomorrow, then I've already captured those um, leads inside of my email marketing database. So I still have a way to communicate with those people even if the platform has died. So that's really important for you to think about is how are you um, capturing people so that you're thinking about the long term for your business. Also, it's another way to communicate with people beyond, um, beyond social media as well. But the other part to be really clear on is that social media is just a piece of the puzzle. It's not um, the magic pill. So we need to ensure that we are driving people back to our shop front. And in a virtual world, that's our website. So we need to be driving them there so that we can get them to take action with us. So think about what the goals are for you. The other one might be that it's sales. And depending on what your business is, I know for service-based businesses that I work with, it's really difficult to get a sale direct from Facebook unless you're putting ads um, behind your content. So what we need to do is make sure that we uh, can get them to our website and then either educate them or nurture them towards working with us. So think about what the goals are for your business. Next is to understand how your ideal client likes to consume 
content. Now, this is a really uh, big topic and we could go into it in great detail, but what I want you to think about first uh, of all is, are they a reader? Do they love watching videos? Or are they someone who like who is drawn to the visual? And that will help you determine whether or not you need to do a mix of written posts uh, and video content, or maybe you need to be doing more inspiring image-based posts to capture their attention in the newsfeed and then to hold that attention so that they consume your content. So think about what uh, they're drawn to. I know that my ideal client tends to be a reader. Um, and if it's video, then it needs to be relatively short video. So they're the two um, strategies that I think about. But when we think about social media and when we think about, let's take Facebook, for example, it's no longer just Facebook. It's Facebook Live, it's Facebook Pages, Messenger, uh, Watch, uh, you know, Stories. There is so much to Facebook. So you need to drill down on, one, what is that content? Uh, or the way that they like to consume content, but two, how does that match the platform that you're going to be um, showing up on? So making sure that you're in the right section of that platform in Instagram. Are you doing Instagram stories or are you doing Instagram newsfeed or are you doing Instagram TV? Um, each platform comes with its own sections. So you need to get clear on what the sections are that you're going to be hanging out on. For example, if you want to uh, try and target me on social media, I don't tend to look at stories. So it's gonna be really hard to capture my attention. I am someone who's in the news feed, so that's gonna be a much more effective way to get in front of me, as an example. Number four is to come up with the content categories that you're going to have inside of your plan. And I find this easier because I can, um, and I'll share a little bit more as we go through this, but I have particular libraries of content that go on certain days. So if I can, those libraries fall into certain categories, then that's easier for me to be able to create content. So as an example, you might have a promotional category. Uh, you might have, uh, and so that promotional category might include things like testimonials, uh, your sales pages, so links to your sales pages, sales calls, trying to attract sales calls. Might have your lead magnets in it. So that would be my promotional category. There'd be a blog post category that I have, which is, uh, you know, I guess uh, self-explanatory, but it has all of my blog um, blogs coming into that particular category. You might have a curated content, and what I mean by that is that you find great articles that you think your ideal client would find really valuable, and you might have a category dedicated to other people's content um, that you curate. There might be a Tips Tuesday where you can do tips on, for example, for me, it might be doing tips on social media and sales funnels and content marketing. So they might fall into um, you know, Tips Tuesday, for example. Um, Friday quotes I have, um, and the Friday quote is all around um, a big theme for me in my business, which is taking time for yourself, taking weekends off, slowing down and celebrating what you've achieved during the week because I don't believe in being chained to your business and always uh, doing your business. So you need to take those weekends off so that you can spend with your family. And so I have um, a whole category around that Friday theme. There's also obviously general inspirational quotes, which for me are attached to specific stories that have lessons in them that I want people to be able to see um, and read and think about the world or think about their business from a very different perspective. There might also be um, a motivational Monday in there so you can look at how um, the content that you're creating um, is going to align with your ideal client. What are, the, what, what are the categories or the topics that they're particularly interested in and how can you categorize those to make it much easier for you when it comes to scheduling content. Number five is brainstorming your content and creating the content. And this is probably the most um, amount of work you're going to do. It's the one step in this whole process that takes um, the longest time. And I'll share with you how I make this a lot easier as we're going through. But this is where you need to get out your social media plan template and start putting content in under those categories. So you might have blog posts on a Wednesday, for example. So you can go through all the blog posts you've got and write content for those blog posts to, to ensure that you can drive people from social media to your actual uh, blog post to read it. So you create teaser content. 
Um, and by doing that, you can look at things like using the headline um, as one particular example use. Say for example, you only have 10 blog posts or less than 10 blog posts. It's gonna get a bit repetitive after you know, um, week 10. So you can find ways to share it in different ways. So as I said, you can splinter off just that title. You might splinter off the introduction. Um, you might have used a really good quote within that blog post and you can splinter out the quote or a fact that you're using. So find different ways to share that one piece of content multiple times. Um, and as far as some of the other content that you're looking at, um, if it's inspiring quotes, create all those inspiring quotes all at once. Go and do the research. Find the uh, types of um, identities or the gurus or the um, people that they are drawn to and make sure that you can um, use that particular, um, those particular um, leaders and, or thought leaders as um, the, the way for you to inspire the quotes that you're going to do. But also think about using your own quotes. You say a lot of things to clients um, in the content that you create, there are certain phrases you use, so make sure that you're using those um, quotes and positioning yourself as the thought leader as well um, in, when you're creating those inspiring quotes. So there's lots of different things you can think about there, but I tend to create the content in categories at a time, one category at a time, and I'll do a certain amount of weeks worth um, and put those into my template to make it easier. So I'm thinking in the same line and you'll find that it will, uh, you'll create content much quicker if you're doing it that way because you're not jumping from one different theme to the next. Similar with your sales pages, opt-ins, you do a bit of an audit of your website and find out what sales pages, what um, opt-in offers you have, and all the testimonies, testimonials that you've attracted over the time. Collate all those and then start creating content from those. And if you struggle with writing, and I have quite a few clients who aren't, um, don't um, perceive themselves as great writers, then this is an opportunity to just open something like Zoom and start talking, or even if you've got a note taker on your phone, you can be audio recording yourself um, and then get those transcribed through something like otter.ai, um, for example, um, as a way for you to be able to get the content done quickly because this is the part that can hold people up from actually moving forward with doing their social media. So get it done quickly, get a few weeks worth up your sleeve, um, and that can really help you. Now as part of this step, you also wanna be thinking about if you're doing LinkedIn and Instagram, then you need to take some time to look at research for hashtags as well. We want about five hashtags on our LinkedIn, that tends to work well, and on Instagram, we're looking for about 28 um, and a great way to start to do this without going into great detail on doing hashtag research, but a really quick and easy way to start is really to look at some people who have a lot of traffic um, and a lot of engagement on their social media and making sure that you look at what hashtags they're using and start experimenting with some of the hashtags that they're using as well. And again, think about your ideal client. Where is, what type of um, hashtags is your ideal client gravitating towards based on the type of people that they might be following and interested in? Um, so hashtags are really important. And the other part of this one, if it's not hashtags, if you're doing, for example, YouTube or Pinterest, then you need to be thinking about uh, SEO keywords. So the things that someone will put into a search uh, field to be able to search for an answer to a particular problem or an aspiration that they um, they want to achieve. Um, so think about what are the keywords that you would use as well and do some research around those. And I'll link up here as well, a resource for um, helping you with your SEO re keyword research as well. Number six is that we want to get this content out there quickly and we want to start leveraging our time. Now, we've got our social media plan with our content in it. Uh, you can leave it in there and schedule one at a time. Um, or I use a tool, a recycling tool that enables me to put the content into actual categories inside the tool. And what happens is, for example, I have 60 something blog posts in the blog category. So I've been blogging for a very long time. So if one blog post goes out a week, then uh, by week 63, it might come back and share blog post number one. So it will keep recycling the content 
um, take depending on what schedule I set up, of course, but it will keep recycling the content. Um, and so this is where you can start leveraging your time a little bit more because you can create a few weeks worth, upload that into the tool. And if you accidentally uh, forget to upload new content in there, it's okay. You're not going to have nothing on your social media because it will start back at that first post in that particular category again. So you've always got content coming out um, and it can, uh, as I said, it leverages your time. It's a smart way to do your social media. And there's another reason why I love it, which I'm going to share in the next step. But think about what um, tool is going to work for you, what method works for you. Some people don't like scheduling and recycling tools because they have a belief that um, they will get less engagement or less uh, reach. You need to, uh, to, to trial that for yourself and find what works for you. I found it doesn't really make much difference with my social media, so I'm more than happy to use it. But think about it for yourself as well. How are you going to get this content created quickly? As I said in the last step, if you can um, transcribe audio or video, if you are not a writer, if you are a writer, um, then making sure that you're creating that content inside of categories first and foremost so that you can get that content done quickly and then start scheduling it to go out. And as far as uh, doing the image creation, because that can be another whole section in itself, um, image creation tools, there are uh, many, and I'll share a link here on some of the tools that I use in my business. But um, a great one that I've been using lately is called Get Stencil. And Stencil actually has quotes in there. It has an image library of Creative Common um, images or photos that you can use. It has icons, it has all sorts of things, and I will link up at some stage a tutorial on how to use that one as well. And number seven, what we want to be doing is optimizing our content so we can keep growing the reach, growing the engagement, and of course, growing those clicks through to our website because that's really important to us. And for me, that's the um, ultimate goal so that I can get people to uh, join my community, join my email list, and of course, um, uh, take action on the calls to action that I have. So what we can do inside of some of the recycling tools or even if you look inside of analytics.facebook.com is a great one. Instagram, if you click on the view and insights underneath um, each of your posts, you'll see some analytics in there and that's going to tell you what's working for you. So if we take Instagram, for example, uh, we can see if we click on the view insights there, it will tell us how many of the uh, impressions that we're getting come from hashtags versus people going to the home feed uh, versus people going to our profile. So that can be really important uh, for you to understand what's working for you and what's not and where to tweak the content that you're doing. Particularly if you're using a recycling tool, you'll know to tweak that particular post the next time it goes out um, it's going to perform better for you. Uh, with Facebook, um, analytics.facebook.com, if you go in there, there's an amazing amount of analytics in there um, for you to be able to look at. But again, looking at what content resonates and what doesn't, was there something that fell flat and how can you improve that piece of content? Does it need an extra element of storytelling to it? Is the image not captivating enough? Uh, what was it that you uh, did in that particular piece of content? that you can either change, tweak, remove um, to improve the results. So for me, it's all about getting better results over time. Um, and that's, that's something that you need to look at. Of course, each, um, each platform has its own analytics. And again, that's another big topic um, that I'm happy to, to go through with your particular social media platforms, what you're doing and how you can improve what you're currently doing if you do need help. But as uh, you can see, there's seven steps there that you need to go through. When you're creating a social media plan, uh, creating a template uh, that you're able to go through to help refine the strategy of what you're doing. And you can download um, a free social media plan template here that'll really um, map out for you the different sections that you need to look at when you're creating one piece of content. It's not just what am I writing for it? It's what is the call to action on this? What is the image or the video I'm using? What is the copy that I have? 
um, and you know what is the the actual goal of this piece of content so and what's you know is there a link that goes with it, with it so you want to think about every single little element that comes with that so if you have any questions please let me know I'm happy to um, happy to answer them if you'd like to chat about your specific social media please reach out there is a link also um, here for you to reach out to me if you'd like to talk about uh, improving your social media um, marketing but thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video thanks